Good afternoon, everyone. I am Chris, and this is Model Airplane Maker. And welcome to Edenvale Airport in sunny Stainer, Ontario, where we are going to see the world's largest scale model airplane, a one-to-one -one scale CF-105 Avro Aero. Yep, you heard that right. This goes beyond any sort of large-scale models you might have in the stash or see on the top shelf of the local hobby store. This is a one-to-one -one scale model of a freakishly large jet interceptor from the late 50s. The museum features other airplanes on static display as well as flying aircraft. So sit back and join me on this visit to a real gem in cottage country. This video starts with one of the strangest sights I've ever seen on the back roads in Ontario. It isn't every day you run into a MIG around here. So when I was driving to cottage country last month, the last thing I would have expected seeing is a MIG-15. I mentioned this to Jim Bates over at a scale Canadian TV. He then informed me that the MIG is part of a museum at this airport and the collection includes a full-sized Avro Aero. Full-sized, you say? An air museum, you say? Well, this I had to see. Today I took along my trusty intern. She usually accompanies me on these sorts of adventures. Yeah, she occasionally gets into the frame, but considering she works mostly for burgers and ice cream, she does a wonderful job keeping me to schedule. Tickets for tours are purchased online at avroaero203.com. I've placed a link in the video description. And as this is an operational airport, you have to book your tour in order to see the airplanes. But the guide was extremely friendly and let our small group have as much time as we wanted in the hangars. We definitely did not feel rushed. Now, I know you did not click on this video to see MIGs and trackers, so here's the moment you've all been waiting for. Behold, the world's biggest model airplane. The Avro Aero 203 replica at Edenvale was built by a group of volunteers over 10 years. It was finished in 2016 and was originally part of the Canadian Air and Space Museum. But in late 2019, it was brought to Edenvale. I don't know a lot more about the construction of this massive model, except that it is riveted metal and it was painted by Bombardier. And as you can see, it fills a hangar rather nicely. If you are Canadian like me, then you know all about the Avro Aero. But for the benefit of my non-Canadian viewers, I think a little background would, might be helpful. Part 8 of the Constitution Act, entitled Fundamental Canadian Identity, insists on certain requirements for all Canadians. One, coffee may only be purchased with an obscene amount of cream and sugar and consumed from a cup which is A, primarily made of Canadian pulp, and B, contains a feature where prizes can be won. Every Canadian must select one Canadian hockey team for life, no matter how bad that team is. And every Canadian must know the legend of the Avro Aero. You see, there are two stories of the Avro Aero. There's the one that is taught and memorized by all Canadians, and then there's the one that outsiders understand. So let's start with the Canadian one. The Avro Aero was the ultimate interceptor, nay, airplane, nay, weapon system. It was thought of, designed, and built entirely by mild-mannered Canadians working reasonable hours at a factory where Zen and Harmony worked hand-in-hand -hand to produce modern marvels. As designed, the arrow could quietly take off, climb vertically at Mach 2 before leveling out at 100,000 feet. It could then fly at Mach 5 to intercept hordes of communist bombers directly over the North Pole with a belly full of pinpoint accurate missiles and a firm but polite resolve. Once those communist hordes were scared off, the Arrow would return to Toronto Island Air Base and land itself gingerly so that the pilots could make it to yet another Leafs championship game. If the Arrow had only been given the chance, it would have single-handedly won the Cold War, united the Germanys, and taught the North Koreans how to peacefully make maple syrup. Follow-on versions of the era would have broken the light speed barrier. They would have taken Gordon Lightfoot and Celine Dion to the moon years before the Americans and probably would have made Canada the high-tech empire of the galaxy. But 
Sadly, it was all destroyed by the evil Darth Diefenbunker, a prime minister who hated Canada so much that not only did he cancel the white dove of Canadian identity, he personally cut them apart with a blowtorch. Now, I was surprised that non-Canadians know an entirely different and obviously false story about the arrow. You see, they see the arrow as a capable Mach 2 interceptor, much like the F-108 rapier and YF-12, that simply had no mission to fulfill. Because even as far back as the late 50s, everyone knew there'd be no fleets of communist bombers flying over the North Pole. Like many defense projects of today, the Arrow Project went way over budget, blew its deadlines, and every government during those years were looking at pricey defense targets to, um, to, to cancel. But the silver lining is that a considerable amount of the engineers on this canceled project ended up working at NASA, where they were involved in several projects, including the one that actually landed someone on the moon. No matter which of these stories you believe is true, the part that I have the most trouble with is the destruction of all five of the flying arrows. And I, I don't understand why. And I believe there is as many theories as to why this was done as there are donuts at Tim Hortons. And I think this is why some truly dedicated model makers took 10 years of their life to scratch build this replica. No matter what anyone thinks of the airplane or what it could have done, at least it should have been preserved. And as far as I know, there's only a no section at the Ottawa Air Museum. The museum also has other exhibits in and around these hangars, including a Tudor, a Cornell, a Chipmunk, and a Tiger Moth. Some of these are actually flying airplanes, and I believe you can book flights in them. There's also a Jet Ranger, which unfortunately I had my finger in front of the camera while I was recording it, but you'll, you can see it in the background in a few of the shots. The museum also has a good collection of built models, though they are all considerably smaller than one-to-one -one scale. Most were behind glass and I had some difficulty with glare, but as you can see, the collection does include several Corsairs, so it got my stamp of approval. Well, I think this was definitely worth the trip, and I'd like to thank the Edenvale Aviation Heritage Museum for welcoming us. We had a great visit and saw some unique airplanes. On top of that, I was able to compensate my little intern with a burger and ice cream at the restaurant next door. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And if you know more about the construction of the Aero Replica or any other airplane in the collection, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, everyone.